Hi guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing and today I want to talk to you about whether or not you should be investing if you have student loans. On average, students who graduated in 2018 entered the workforce with a student loan debt of $39,400 that's a 6% increase from the previous year. And the average for those who go on to pursue master's or doctorate degrees is even higher still. There was a really scary article in the Wall Street Journal about a dentist who went to USC for dental school and for post-grad training and ended up with $1 million of debt growing at 80,000 a year. And all he was making as a dentist was 225,000 before tax, which means effectively after tax, if he could pay his interest, he'd be paying out half of his income. Ultimately, he's gonna bankrupt somehow on that process because there's no way he can pay that. The expense of a college education from both private and public universities continues to climb higher and higher at a time when achieving a college degree is growing increasingly important as well. This, in my opinion, is being caused by government programs designed to improve the ability of students to get to college. And you get this awful unintended consequence for the last 40 years as money is made available to students. Guess what? The tuition rises to meet whatever price people will pay. And they have been raising the tuition in colleges at an extraordinary rate, nearly double the cost of living index for the last 40 years, resulting in college education, putting young people behind the eight ball from the time they come out of college. Many times there is no way they'll ever pay this off. All of this adds such a burden to people who are just getting out of school and trying to start their lives. And given the importance of starting to invest at a young age, weighed against the importance of paying off this debt, many graduates are just, they, there's not even a question. They don't have any money to invest. They don't have any extra income, right? Do you pay off your student loan? Do you invest? Duh, your student loan's rolling at 8%. What are you gonna do, right? Here's the catch. Money invested when you're young is massively more valuable to you by the time you're 60 than money that's invested when you're just a few years away from retirement since it has so much more time to grow and compound. We don't say it enough on this YouTube broadcast that compounding is like the eighth wonder of the world. It is such a, a mathematical marvel that Albert Einstein, I think, even said that it's very difficult to understand the math and it's an incredible thing if you could just figure it out. What it means is that as you start investing at a young age, you don't see a lot of return, but pretty soon you're getting a return on the return. And gradually you're getting a return on the return on the return on the return. And then you're getting a return on all of those returns. And this thing turns up like a hockey stick. So you start off here like that, and then it starts going like this. And as you get toward retirement, those last 10 years can double the entire size of the retirement that you have. So with this being the case, it's really essential to begin saving for retirement as soon as possible, even if you're only able to contribute small amounts to starting out. And I'd really like to change the way I'm saying that. I keep thinking, yeah, I save for retirement. What I really mean is, the earlier you can get started as an investor, the sooner you will have financial freedom. Forget about retirement. I never am gonna retire. People who do what I do die with their boots on. I mean, come on, Charlie Munger's 95 years old. He's still working hard, so is Warren Buffett. Actually, we were, <laughs> we were at the Warren Buffett meeting um, back in May, and somebody asked Warren um, if he's really still working hard at the company because he seems to be turning more and more things over to other people. And Charlie piped up and said, I think Warren's working about as hard as he always has. He's always seemed to be semi-retired to me. So he's still semi-retired. What you want in your life, what I want in my life, what my daughter Danielle uh, uh, wrote about in the book Invested that came out recently, is about financial freedom. We don't wanna stop being productive. We don't wanna stop working. We don't wanna have retirement and stand around on a golf course. Well, maybe you do, but I don't. I mean, standing around on a golf course always looks good when you can't stand around on a golf course. But once you can, all you want to, you find the thrill goes away fairly. 
What you want is to be productive. What you want is to help the world. What you want is to help other people be productive. What you want is to see your kids grow up and do well. So what you're gonna think about, I think, is not so much retirement, right? Because retirement's like forever away when you're 23 years old. It's forever away, you're not even thinking about it. And maybe you're like me, you don't even want one, right? But financial freedom, now that's another story entirely. That is all about having a great life. That's all about figuring out what your dharma is, figuring out what you should be doing with your life, and having the financial freedom to do that is like a miracle happening. So investing at a young age is incredibly important because you could reach financial freedom when you're 35, when you're 30. I mean, it's incredible, right? And if you get started young, you get started with habits that will stay with you your whole life. You will never be in the situation of being a wage slave struggling to get to a meager retirement when you're 65, when you finally can start living, and that's crazy. You want to start living now. And in order to do that, you've got to know that you can get higher rates of return by investing on your own and that those rates of return will produce cash flow for you that'll let you get to financial freedom. And if you get in the habit of investing a little bit of extra income, as soon as you start working, it's likely gonna be a habit that will carry you for the rest of your life and get you to financial freedom before you can ever dream that you could have gotten there. Likewise, the knowledge gained when you first dive into investing is invaluable. And the sooner you learn how to successfully invest in the stock market, the sooner you're financially free. Now, here's the thing though, paying off debt at a young age is equally important as investing at a young age. They're both incredibly important. In the same way that money invested grows and compounds over time, student loan debt with higher interest rates is gonna grow and compound over time as well. Just like with that dentist, and exponentially, it could get to a place where you could never pay it off, and then wiping out all the wealth that you're trying to build. So in the end, Trying to figure out whether you should be better off putting extra money into the stock market or putting extra money toward paying off your student loan debt, it comes out on how high interest rates are on your loans. If you are paying interest rate loans that are usurious, like 10, 12, 14%, you gotta get out of that. Deciding whether to put money in the market or put into paying off student loans boils down to a really simple equation. If the interest rates on your loans are abnormally high, if they're higher than the returns you could reasonably expect to make in the stock market, any extra money you have has got to go to paying off student loan debt as soon as possible. But once you're free from the bad debt, then you can focus on investing. So let's do some math here, okay? If you've got, let's say, a monster interest rate, let's say 12, 14%, Hey, making 12 to 14% in the, in the stock market, that's a pretty darn good rate of return. We target, as rule one investors, we're targeting 15% rates of return, okay? That's what we accept as a minimum acceptable rate of return. My goal is a consistent 26% per year. That will double my money every three years. Monesh Prabhai even has 26% written on his, on his license plate. He's one of the best investors in the world. So if we're thinking about where we're trying to go, 15 to 26%, and we're paying interest at 12 to 14, that's a little too close to call. I would pay down that loan in a heartbeat before I'd invest. On the other hand, if you're like most students that are doing student loans, your rates are six to 8%. And some of you can even refinance at lower rates than that. If you're getting money at 6% and you can make 15, then you should be thinking seriously about putting that money in the stock market. It could be a really good idea to be investing in the stock market as soon as possible and just simply pay interest on that out of the gains in the market. Now, believe me, this is not gonna be for everybody and it certainly isn't gonna be for beginning investors. This ability to consistently make 15, 20, 25% requires study, it requires effort, so you can't just say, oh yeah, I'm just gonna go do it theoretically because guess what? The interest rate isn't theoretical on your loan. It's really gonna get charged to you. So paying down your student loan is still a major financial goal. Student loan is a shackle that you wanna get rid of as soon as possible, even when the interest rates are relatively low. But if you can consistently make a great return in the market, then you gotta think seriously about putting the money there first. So I would do this. 
I would say, how consistent is my rate of return? Can I consistently go out and make one to 2% per month? one to 2% per month. And if I can't do that consistently, then I've got to go pay off the student loan. Now I would do this though. I would start instilling a habit, invest some of the money in the market, some of the money, if for no other reason than to get started investing and begin building that investing discipline that will serve you in the future, but still focus on eliminating the student loan debt as quickly as you can while you're learning. Now, by the way, you can also invest using paper trading tools on any brokerage website. It's a very, very good way to start building the discipline, even if you have no money to invest. So now I'd love to hear from you guys. Are you investing or are you not because you're busy paying off your student loans and using that for an excuse to postpone getting to financial freedom? Now leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure and follow up with you. Thanks for watching you guys. Now go play. If you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about whether you should pay off your student loans or invest, hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. We got a lot of it on here. And don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift, you guys. And thanks again for watching.